Morning guys, welcome to the small off workshop and don't be fooled by my surroundings, this is a woodworking video. So for three or four days a week I work down in London and this is my morning walk to the building site where I'm currently working, it's about three miles. A couple of videos ago I spoke about increasing my woodworking skills but the problem is because I'm away so much I don't really get time to dedicate time to just learning new skills, practicing joints. It takes 4,000 hours to get really good at something. That equates to about five years of work in 40 hour weeks. So it's a long time. Seeing as I spend two or three nights a week down here, that would be a nice contribution over a year or two towards that 4,000 hours. But to do that, I would need a workshop and I live in a small two bedroom apartment with my colleague. And I don't have anywhere where I could put a workshop. But I did think, what if I could would work absolutely anywhere and if I could what would I need so I'm going to hand you back to JP in the workshop for some more information thanks JP you stay safe down there so the plan is to make a really small workbench around about 14 inch by 10 inch I'm going to make this out of softwood with some grooves in that I can use to clamp things to and I can actually use this workbench almost anywhere and I'm envisaging it at the moment like a inverted bench hook so I can sew and cut on it just light stuff nothing big just really small sections of timber where I can practice my cutting and my chiseling and it's not something that's going to get a real lot of ammo primarily because I'm going to be using it in a little confined space in an apartment block and I can't really be cutting and chiseling and making a lot of noise so it needs to be kind of fairly quiet and I'm thinking of just using really small tools not create a lot of dust not create a lot of waste but actually just something over those nights away that I can actually just practice cutting chiseling uh, and just putting joints together just so I can have that extra practice when I'm not here. I have bought some lengths of inch by two and I've also got some scraps and I'm thinking of cutting them that's about 400 so I'm going to just cut these into roughly into thirds like that. Here's a stock and I'm going to try and alternate my green pattern as much as I can. So, in a nutshell, that's going to be my little workbench. So the plan was to put this through the thickness planer but then I got to thinking it's not really in the essence of this project. I'm trying to learn skills without using the power tools so really I should do this with the hand plane so the only hand plane I've got at the moment is a smoothing plane so let's get that out and also my double handle scraper which is there. See if I can get rid of some of this glue up. The only sharpening stone I have here at the moment is this Rutland diamond stone with a 360-600. I know it's not got the grit that some people take their planes down to, I think I've seen people take them down to 6,000s. The downside of having everything on wheels and a relatively light workbench it doesn't really play well for this kind of woodwork. This is when you want a proper, real old heavy joiner's workbench. I think that's about done. Put a stick at each end and line down to see if you've got any twist because the length of the stick, the 
accentuates the twist and also you can see the clips so there look see that a little bit of a rock there so i've got a high spot that, there in terms of twist i'm really happy with that but i've still got a little high spot I've actually moved it over a little bit now to sort of here. I'm happy with that. I wonder if I can just set the camera so you can see that. The idea is you get them so they're not twisted like that or like that. Just parallel as you look down them. I think doing it by hand rather than with the machine is a much more mindful experience. So I quite enjoyed doing that, it was nice. And I'm actually really happy with the results. So basically at the moment we've got that now. The other side has just got, still got a, got a few screws in it because we used a bit of offcut for one of the pieces. Okay, so I've run this through the router and I've had the first fail of this exercise. I don't know what I was thinking of about routering across the cross grade and thought it was going to be strong enough for the clamp. So whilst I was doing that I just routed a couple of scrap pieces and I'll cut these down now and make some nosings for them. And actually, I thought because this was actually had a chunk out of this anyway, I thought I might just put a little rebate in that. Just a little tiny rebate, I thought it might just help if you're just doing little intricate cuts, that rebate might be just nice to rest it along. Might be something I never use, but rather than worrying about it, let's design the little defect in. I'm going to swap now into my small router cutter and put a couple of little T-slots in it, and then the routering's done, then off. I'll just have to finish these off by hand. Problem is, you can't really do these with an amp plane. The router's perfect for these. I suppose the only thing you can do is create a trench and then plant a piece on that's actually smaller to create the tea. Broke it. That's annoying, I've just brought the router cutter. That's two fails in 10 minutes. That's why I always put a six mil groove in, so I'm not overtaxing it.
Hi guys, welcome to my humble abode. So basically this is my idea of my little work anywhere workbench. So it's fixed to the tops. It's really, really solid. I've bought a few tools and I've got a couple of more tools that I've bought from Amazon. A little tiny hammer with nylon ends just to try and keep the noise down. And a new Japanese fine pull saw. So the idea is that I can work there I can put the bin under there and then actually with these, this box try and make some kind of shoot to shoot the dust in there. Not actually going to make too much dust I hope, but see whether I can just open this and have a little look. And that's it for this build. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this series as I progress my joinery skills and hopefully take you guys on my journey, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And for now, I'm gonna go and play some more with my little vice and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. That's got to be the most famous clock in the world.